Hello, welcome. My name is Dominic. Um, I'm a senior developer at SAP inside the Red Runtime Engine, um, also known as the Zal framework. And my colleague, Stefan. Who also has to turn on his webcam. Hi, sorry. Um, hi, my name is Stefan Mattes. Um, I'm part of the RAP integration team at SAP. Yeah, and uh, today we want to talk about uh, RAP troubleshooting using the ABAP cross trace. I think my light is a little bit off. Um, I'm very sorry for that. One sec, please. It gets uh, it gets darker earlier now, right? So let's check if it's now a little bit better. It's not. I'm very sorry for that. But hopefully the presentation will still be um, very good. Yeah, um, RAP troubleshooting using the ABAP cross trace. Um, so let's talk about today's agenda. Um, first of all, we want to talk about uh, some general, the general idea behind the ABAP cross trace, the history, the motivation behind it. Um, and after this very brief introduction, uh, we directly jump into the system uh, where Dominic then will show us how to set up uh, the ADT and configure the ABAP cross trace tool in the ADT integration. After that, we'll have a small look uh, into the um, different frameworks who contributed to the um, ABAP cross trace and how to work with them in a best practices manner. And with all that learned, we then together want to troubleshoot two small examples um, where we utilize ABAP cross trace to uh, track down some issues we have prepared for you. Um, yeah, so ABAP cross trace, why ABAP cross trace? Um, so formally, uh, all the different um, RAP framework teams um, had own troubleshooting tools, own support tools. They, they were various and some were really extensive and some uh, weren't, um, weren't that extensive and also were, were very isolated. So it wasn't very good integrated. So there were a lot of borders and stuff. And um, with, with RAP and um, all the teams coming together, the idea and the vision behind this, this tool actually is to get um, a unified and also very holistic tool where you can then track down the issues. So you get with the big RAP vision, also can, can, uh, can understand the big RAP picture in this tool while troubleshooting your issues. Um, the ABAP Crosstrace tool actually is already um, integrated in your ADT uh, installation, uh, if you have a recent one. Um, so right after the session, you could uh, straight, straight go ahead and, and troubleshoot some issues uh, if you want to with a, a newly learned um, knowledge. Exactly. So it's integrated in ADT um, and uh, you can use it to trace and analyze executed ABAP code. Uh, so um, there are two big uh, use cases we want to emphasize in the session. The first one is um, understanding RAP execution. So you're new to RAP. Um, or you want to deepen your knowledge in RAP um, and you want to know, okay, where is my code? Um, how is my code called? So on and so forth. Um, and this can easily be, easily be done um, by utilizing the ABAP cross trace. You, you track down your BO interaction or even interaction with other RAP BOs. And there you will see the RAP, big RAP, big picture. And in combination actually um, with the very nice documentation uh, which exists, um, you can um, search in the internet or in the sub help portal for the following wordings, RAP activities during a sub LUW or safe sequence runtime. Um, there you will find um, great entry site and also great runtime diagrams where you can learn more about the orchestration which is done um, in, in your, your RAP stack. And with those two tools, yeah, you are explicit or um, um, above cross trace in combination with the generic documentation, you can get a very nice and deep understanding how all the stuff, this, uh, this above code is working together. That's the first big use case. And the second, uh, likely the uh, most important use case is actually to troubleshoot your app development. Yeah, you have built uh, a business object, you have implemented a RAP business object, you have implemented a new feature, for instance, an action, you bring the button to the UI, you click on it and ah, you get a very uh, generic error message and you don't really know where to start actually. Um, in some cases, it could also be that the error message or the error situation is so generic and that you won't even retrieve um, any error indication like uh, in the ADT feed reader or formerly SD22. So you don't really know where to start, for instance, debugging. Um, and therefore, it could really be painful to track down this issue. 
Um, and that's where the ABAP cross trace comes in. Um, this is, gives you a great uh, opportunity to, to narrow down actually where your issue lays um, and uh, to understand um, what is not working well in this specific manner. Exactly. Um, if you want to learn more about working with ABAP cross trace um, about the session beyond, um, you can always search in the SAP help portal for the wording working with the ABAP cross trace. Um, there you will find further information, the official documentation regarding this tool. Yeah, with uh, this said, um, we will jump directly into the system and Dominic will show us how to set up and configure ADT and other cross trace. <clears throat> yeah. Um, so um, I will start um, first with um, where to find the ABAP cross trace. To do that, um, I'm going to, oops. I'm going to move this a little bit to the side. Um, at the top, um, there is the search icon. Here you can search for the ABAP crosstrace. Um, it's probably the first entry that you will find. Um, once you've opened it, a new view will be shown. And um, from working with the ABAP crosstrace, um, we've gathered yeah, some experience. And um, in our, from, our perspective, from our perspective, it is useful to have a dedicated perspective for the other cross trace because otherwise you're always switching between different windows and trying to understand things and always going back and forth. And so we would recommend to create an own um, perspective for that. And I would do that now. <clears throat> so um, first I will close everything that I don't need, um, which is basically everything um, apart from the properties view, um, which I will keep. Oops, that was a double click. And um, so we keep uh, the properties view, we keep the other cross trace, and the outline is not needed. And we collapse the project explorer for now. <clears throat> and then we put this side by side because of um, the current settings of uh, uh, my display resolution. And we add a new properties view. Um, you can duplicate that, and um, we'll rearrange it to be the beneath each other. <clears throat> And the reason that we need two properties views is that um, a lot of information is displayed here. And in the future, it might be um, necessary to, to see two things at the same time. So it's recommended to duplicate them. Um, one thing that you have to ensure, um, this icon here um, pins the view to current selection. Um, so you have to unpin it so that it updates automatically. And um, this is already the perspective that we want to use for the other cross trace always. And so, sorry for that. And so we save it. Um, to do that, you go to the perspective at the top right, right click it, and then hit save as, and then you give a name of a cross trace and save it. And um, now you have that perspective saved into your settings and you can always reuse it. And to go back to the old or to the default other perspective, you just open the default other perspective both will be available and you can switch between the default one and the one we have just created, um, depending on whether you want to analyze something or whether you want to develop or debug or whatever. <clears throat> so um, now the other cross trace view itself. Um, the other cross trace view um, has two sub views, the trace configuration, the trace results. Um, under trace configurations, um, you create the configuration of what you want to trace. And later on, once you have reproduced the error, um, the results will be shown under the trace results. Um, now we go into the trace configuration. So you will see that here, I have already a trace configuration, an old one, but um, for this demo, I will create a new trace configuration <clears throat> and a new window pops up and um, this can be split up into the general settings at the top and the components that you want to select for the trace. And um, we'll start at the top. So status, we of course want to keep it active right now because um, we might want to trace something. Um, then you can set the number of traces that you want to create. Um, so you can set a threshold here that um, if it is exceeded, no further traces are created and the database is not um, dumped with too many data. <clears throat> Um, you can select whether you want to include content and potential sensitive content. Um, the recommendation here is to mark both um, because if you don't, then it just shows um, the execution, but no data. So no keys, no values that have been updated, et cetera. 
Um, you can set a deletion time for the trace. Um, so the configuration will remain for a certain time and you can set that it will should remain for a couple of hours or days and then automatically delete itself um, or it will remain. You can give it a description to identify a certain configuration, for instance, if you want to save that for, for the future. And um, then you can provide request filters. Um, so here um, you have a user filter. This is my current user in the trial system. Um, you can use the auto completion to search for that. Um, if you want to trace for another user, for instance, by it, I will keep my own user. You can restrict the traces that are written to an entry type. So, or for instance, if you have are using a generic test user on the system and a lot of different requests are sent to the system for this user, you can restrict it to a certain type um, and to a certain request name. So the service name basically. And um, with that, we are ready finished with the general settings. And next up would be the components. Um, due to the resolution right now, this view isn't really big, so we have to scroll through it. Um, but the components itself is basically um, entries for the frameworks that write into the trace. And um, we will only cover um, the runtime specific entries. Um, so only the ones, the ones that are involved during the generic execution of the request. And um, our general recommendation is to first start with trace level one. The reason behind is um, that it covers the basic essential information um, as Stefan already pointed out, uh, can be used to learn and start working with RAP and get a good overview of an execution and to compare it to the documentation to understand everything better. <clears throat> and um, if you increase the trace over time, um, the information, of course, gets more and it might exceed um, the knowledge that the documentation provides and also the knowledge you need as an application developer. Um, because of course, this tool was built primarily for us ourselves um, during development. And that's also the reason why currently the trace level is always an expert level because um, that's the level that we use during the analysis of issues in support cases. <clears throat> Our general um, recommendation is also to trace the level that you want to look at in the end. So it's not recommended to, for instance, trace at level three expert and later on only display level one because that might lead to a possible loss of information um, because not all components currently use um, the trace in the same way. So it might be that um, if a higher level is entered, other information is provided and later on it may be filtered out and that might lead to inconsistencies in the trace if it's filtered incorrectly. Sorry for that. <clears throat> um, another cool use case of the cross trace is um, that you can share it. We'll show it later on. Um, so when you have an incident or an issue that you can't troubleshoot yourself and you need support from SAP, you can provide the trace to SAP development support um, so that we don't have to reproduce the issue and can analyze the issue already with information provided by you that will speed up the support and also make hard to reproduce issues easier to, to analyze. <clears throat> and um, another disclaimer, um, the trace itself is um, maxed out at 10,000 entries. So if you're scenario is really complex and really big, and you've selected everything or all components in the trace, that makes it pretty fast, um, the 10,000 records. Um, so if you have such a big scenario, start small and slowly increase the information that you want to trace. Good, um, with that being said, um, let's start with the components. Um, so the bodies, we will skip that because um, it's not part of the, the rep processing itself. So the first entry for us would be the ABAP behavior runtime. Um, the ABAP behavior runtime is um, basically the, the kernel that directly communicates um, with your behavior implementations. Um, and it's split up into the core runtime and the determination and validation runtime. Um, for us, the recommendation is to select both because this is the point in the trace where you see where the framework switches to your implementation. And our recommendation would be to start with level one. 
Um, for support communication, the um, recommendation is to use trace level three. Um, next up would be the both, both rep managed runtimes. Um, they are split up into the BSP framework and the CSP framework. Um, here, the background is that um, basically CSP is the BDEV managed runtime and BSP is for mixed legacy scenarios. For instance, also if a BOP scenario is, BOPF scenario is um, involved, then you might mark this um, to see the communication with your BOPF implementation. And um, here the recommendation is to keep it on level one again um, for both cases because um, in the BSP um, L level two, the extended information might exceed the basic information you need and might become too detailed. And in general, again, level three is recommended for experts and also when communicating with SAP support. Need to drink something, sorry. Next up, um, the DSP, the draft service provider, which is taking over um, the draft runtime. So whenever you have um, enabled your BO for a draft, <clears throat> um, the draft service provider takes over um, the buffering and um, writing to the draft tables. So same thing as CSP and BSP for the active side, DSP takes over the task for the draft side. <clears throat> Here, the recommendation is the same, um, essential for um, beginners, slowly increasing for SAP support, um, level three is the best. Now, um, marked here is the rep ATC checks, which um, are not necessarily needed. Um, the ATC check is only available in on-premise and only covers um, your basic read scenarios um, via EML for your BO. Um, so it's not necessary to mark that um, when analyzing an issue. Then the RUP enterprise event enablement. Um, this um, should be enabled if you're working with events or if you want to analyze event handling. Um, here, um, the good information is that it is self-contained. So if we want to just see what uh, events are raised and to understand what is happening in the background, um, it is sufficient to mark that. If you want to know um, in what order the uh, events are raised at which point in time in the processing, so Dominic, during the interactive phase. Yeah. Dominic, uh, there's something overlapping your... Uh, your My audio? Your, your screen on top. Yeah. There are some... What? There's I don't see anything. Shared and it's overlapping. The upper 10%. Uh, over the is created. There are some. Ah, that's the Zoom thing huh? the header. Okay. <laughs> um, I don't know why. Now it's is not it... better. <laughs> <laughs> ah, that, 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 is it gone now? Better. Okay. Yeah, it's still it's, there. It's but better. It's, it's better. It's better. Okay. I don't know whether I can move that. Yeah, I can. Okay, great. Is it better now? Yeah, wonderful. Oh, okay, great. Thanks. <laughs> Sorry for that. Um, yeah, um, so the uh, um, events are self-contained. Um, if you want to see whether when events are raised, um, you can use that. If you want to see um, during which phase they are raised, um, then you need to enable other parts of the framework, um, which we will um, talk about in a minute. And here again, trace level one is recommended and for SAP support communication, trace level three. Um, the next up is the your data service um, generation runtime. Um, this is not necessarily needed. Um, so during activation and publishing of your service binding, um, several artifacts are generated and a lot of things are happening in the background. And um, it might be that there are issues that can occur. And if this is the case, you can look at them by selecting this entry. Um, but generally speaking, it's not necessarily, so only needed really when troubleshooting um, that part. And um, here again, trace level three is recommended when forwarding this to SAP. And um, yeah, from the team, um, the feedback was to really provide that because sometimes it's hard to reproduce such issues. So if you encounter an issue during activation, 
um, please trace it and provide the trace to SAP support. <clears throat> and um, now finally, last point is um, the rep uh, runtime engine or rep orchestration and query, the Zala framework, um, which is split up into four things. Um, the Zala framework basically takes over um, the general orchestration and it is recommended to always um, activate this when tracing um, the processing of your request um, because without that, all the other um, trace components will just appear out of nowhere and not be ordered and not it, it won't be um, you won't be able to really recognize why things are called and in which phases they are called. Um, Zadl is responsible to do that and therefore the trace also shows it. And so the recommendation is to always enable Zadl even if you have an issue with your managed implementation or with your unmanaged implementation. Um, because that way you know when your implementations are called, with what, and what processing happened before and afterwards. Hmm. Um, yeah, so um, Zadl has different um, responsibilities. On one hand, um, the orchestration of the transactional runtime and the query, so the retrieval of data from the database and the generation of the SQL statements. Um, to do everything, um, we have a compiler which um, uses um, APIs from data dictionary to retrieve information of the CDS views and their stack. And um, we compile that and generate um, a metadata cache and um, sometimes you see errors and for instance in the service binding header um, that there is an issue with some entity and um, if you want to check that or if you see that the dollar metadata raises um, an error then you can enable the metadata cache compilation and then you will see that um, the APIs to the metadata queries um, are uh, basically the calls to DDIC to see whether the data from DDIC is consistent so whether what is currently visible in the CDS view is actually persisted in the database. And um, the other two are general events in the runtime of SADA. Um, so the recommendation is to mark them. Um, here we have different levels. Um, so actually, if you're a beginner and want to learn the essentials, then um, you can mark the trace level one. Um, we have actually trace level two as extended information for application developers, so a little bit more information is provided during the SQL execution, for instance. You can see um, the, the statement um, hash that HANA is using to execute. And you can use that to watch um, the execution plan if that is available. And um, other information is added, but you can start with one and trace level three is again the, the, ex, the expert view and what we use in support and which you can use to forward to us. <laughs> and with that, um, we are finished because we are going to cover Gateway itself. Um, and that's it for RAP troubleshooting. Um, this is the recommended um, configuration of the trace. Um, you should always enable the Zadl framework, um, eventing if you um, to check for events um, depending on your implementation. If you have draft in your BO, you can mark that. If you have a managed BO, um, then you can mark both managed runtimes. And um, also the ABAP behavior should be also always be enabled because that's the, the point in time where you are called. And um, with that, we create the trace configuration. And um, we are called quickly going to have a look at the example that we have created. Um, so we have a very simple um, travel BO, one node um, with a couple of associations, but no um, compositions. And um, we have now created a new action. And this is a rather trivial case. Um, we have created it, but we have forgotten to implement it. And here, um, BDF, um, editor already states that it's not implemented, but let's assume we forgot that um, and we didn't see it and we are opening our application. Then we hit go and we get the data and then there is the accept travel um, action that we have just created and we hit that action and we get a runtime error. <clears throat> it doesn't state anything. 
and we could go to the um, feed reader and check for the dump. But as we have just created um, the other cross trace, um, we can go to the trace results and refresh that. And there is a lot of things happening in the background from other examples that I created. But um, the, the two newest one, which were just created at 1640, um, were first the get request when we hit go. And we can have a look at that. Um, we can see um, that um, data has been retrieved from different database tables for the draft entries and for the active instances. And then expands have been have happened and um, the data has been returned, so nine entities. And um, if we look at the problematic part, um, we will see um, that an exception was caught and that caused a, sh a short dump. <clears throat> And here, I would like to point out a few things. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, um, there is uh, the possibility to trace on different levels. And um, when opening the trace, there is a default level that is selected. And you can change that by going to Window, Preferences, and then ADT. And under the cross trace entry, you can set the default filter, which is currently set to one. And we will keep that. But if you want to um, edit that, you can do that here. And then it will change the default filter, which you can change manually always um, under this button and add additional filters. Um, then other features of the um, trace itself um, are, for instance, the navigation. So here you can already see that um, the ABAP runtime called um, an implementation. And um, it's highlighted in blue. And by um, clicking Control Click, which is also the tip tool, a tooltip, <laughs> um, it will navigate to the method that has been called, in this case, the get global authorizations method. And um, yeah, in general, the, the trace records um, contain a short me message which describe in a brief way what happened in that entry. And by double clicking an entry, um, you can um, display the properties. Um, so in this case, um, yeah, just pick something, the global permissions phase, for instance. Um, the properties will then update, and um, you can select from different um, uh, property tabs. So the content, for instance, or general information, um, or the call stack, if that is helpful for you. And um, if actually something is happening in there, like during the call of the uh, global authorizations method, you will see the parameters that are used to call it. and. Um, another feature of the cross trace is highlighting. So um, we have implemented um, the trace in a way that we try to point you into the right direction when something bad happens. Um, in this case, um, an exception occurred, which was unexpected, and we can already determine that that is something that is wrong and done incorrectly by the application, and therefore we mark it in, in deep orange um, to guide you and to get you into the right direction where you have to look at. And in this case, um, it is actually stating the same thing as the dump. Um, so um, that the, let's look at the short text, um, that um, the handler is not implemented and um, that led to a short dump at application modeling error um, for the BDEF ZSMC travel TP. And um, to overcome that issue, well, Quite obviously, we have to implement the behavior definition action. And to that, we go um, to the BDEF and use the quick fix to add the method. And implementing it is not necessary to solve the issue. So if we activate it and go back to the application and hit accept travel, the error does no longer occur. OK, some other issue occurred now. <laughs> Um, but that's basically the idea. And um, yeah, regarding the implementation of the action and further um, examples for the cross trace, I would hand over to Stefan. Thank you, Dominic. Camera isn't working. Ah, slightly okay. Um, thank you, Dominic. Yeah. Um, as uh, already teasered, um, 
the action um, now is at least existing in the behavior implementation. And when clicking um, now, strangely, this error occurs. Okay. However, um, we will straight go ahead and check. Okay. <laughs> uh, we will hit back to the behavior implementation. I'm very sorry for this one. But um, now, now the first issue is fixed. And uh, the second issue we want to look at, uh, we will encounter um, shortly um, when we implement, um, sorry, when we implement the action in our um, behavior implementation. So when we have a look at our behavior implementation, I think we have a problem with, uh, no, okay. Um, when we look into here, um, we saw that Dominic has added um, this accept travel implementation by utilizing the quick fix of ADT. Um, I copy uh, the code we have prepared for you um, into this method. Um, formatter doesn't work as well. That's good. Okay. Um, and um, we um, copy this code here. We activate the class. Um, and now we check um, whether our implementation works fine or not. Therefore, we go back to the UI, um, navigate to this instance, and click Accept Travel. And oh, nice. Now we get uh, another error code actually. Um, and this is one of those error codes uh, we already teased in the beginning. Um, I get a rather um, generic error message. Yeah, um, resource not found. OK, something happened. But when heading to ADT and checking the feed reader, um, we can see um, the error actually, um, which um, happened uh, due to the non-implemented um, action of the BDEF. But we don't, don't get any other um, um, indication what could lead to this error. Therefore, we quickly head um, to our ABAP cross-trace um, window in ADT. Um, I have prepared, um, as Dominic showed to us, um, this um, ABAP cross-trace configuration. I activate it. Oh, sorry. Um, I active, maybe I deactivate it again. Okay. The wrong one. Okay, I deactivated the command because um, my front end now is uh, kind of in a in undefined state. So better to start uh, from from a clean beginning. Ah, we also see the first instance somehow is gone. Interesting. We go back um, to the starting point where we can reproduce the error. Go back to ADT, activate the trace. Uh, so we will only trace the, uh, the resulting traffic from the application, uh, which we are really interested in go back to the UI, then click the faulty action again. We retrieve the same error again on the front end, go back to ADT and deactivate the trace. So now we have um, basically this snapshot of this faulty situation in the system. And actually that's one of the big advantages, um, which also was mentioned by Dominic already, uh, of the other cross trace in contrast to debugging. When debugging, of course, you have a lot of flexibility. You can jump around in the call stack. You can change the values, so on and so forth. But working with uh, the debugging tool is um, in, in, in such situation or could be very painful because it's a quite local approach, but with uh, um, with ABAP cross trace, and this is uh, what we will see very soon, um, we have a more top-down approach to narrow down the er possible error location. And in this case, um, we have exactly such a snapshot of the system. Um, we um, open the ABAP cross trace. We also open our ABAP cross trace perspective to have a more detailed look at it. And um, so we start to analyze the cross trace. Um, so we, what we can see here, yeah, um, in the um, cross trace before, we aborted uh, a little earlier because um, uh, in the setup phase or even before reaching uh, actually in the active phase that the code, which obviously wasn't there, uh, we aborted already. This isn't like that in this case. So what we now can see very nice is um, that here all the different um, RAP, RAP phases are called or the different handlers of our RAPBOs are called like global authorization, the lock, the read, uh, which has to be done beforehand for those, um, for those um, exits. And then actually we enter the handler phase and here already um, we can see this is, there's a small highlighting. So we have a look at it, whether there something went wrong, but also here, yeah, the lock um, seemed to work, the read seems to work. And uh, we also have this, um, sorry, this um, 
EML modification, which somehow isn't um, marked isn't marked as uh, as problematic by any runtime or by any framework in the up cross face. Therefore, I also have a look just to be sure. Okay, we have this change record here. Um, we remember. Okay, we have done something to the travel ID. Okay, it seems um, we have reached the implementation. We also have some some setting of a value there. It yeah, looks good so far. Um, but after the modification, we even get into the um, RAP safe sequence. And even there where normally or usually uh, maybe some determination or uh, some, sorry, validation could fail, there's nothing marked. Yeah, So there are no fail keys thrown anywhere in the RAP transaction. So this all seemed to work, pretty, work out pretty well. Um, but when we scroll further down uh, after actually um, the, modif the modification the interaction phase as well as the um, safe sequence was executed successfully uh, we can see um, that the, um, the read which results uh, due to the um, action um, execution somehow seems to fail um, as we see this um, this highlighting here there we can see okay invalid instance okay what happens here we have a managed query um, for our processed object set as MC travel TP. This is actually our projection um, CDS view. And there we can see the, the read uh, executed afterwards somehow didn't return any data. And so um, what we then uh, can do here as well, we check, okay, what actually was queried yeah, here as well. Travel ID 02 looks fine to me. I don't know what could be wrong. So let's check. Um, actually the process object where we might could see any uh, indication what our error cause could be. Uh, when we go into the, the, the projection view and scroll a little bit down and have a look at it, um, there at the end of, uh, or at the, at the bottom of our projection view, we see a where condition because the purpose of um, this um, travel projection view in our use case is actually um, to display all open or all booked travels. Um, but when we remember, oh, I saw in the cross trace actually, we will bring those uh, those things together. We saw in the modification phase, I am uh, oh, sorry, that we saw that we actually have uh, this EML modification done where we set the overall status to A. So we head back to our implementation where we uh, formally implemented our action and indeed now see, okay, I um, have assigned a, a wrong constant actually uh, to my EML statement. I set it not to overall status um, booked, but rather to archive. So quick, let's quickly fix that um, by assigning the correct constant to it, saving and activating the source code again, and uh, then hitting back to the UI where we do a refresh again, because we want to do it um, for uh, fresh and nice clean UI uh, because otherwise something like this could happen. Um, we restarted um, from the service binding again. And from here, we try again and check whether our error situation was resolved. I go to the instance, I click accept travel. And uh, as we now can see or have seen, the overall status indeed was set to booked and the error message didn't show up anymore. Yeah, um, that's basically how we utilize um, the ABAP cross trace in this case to narrow down the error location. Because as you saw in the ABAP cross trace, um, this error would have been quite painful to search for uh, while debugging. Because actually, this error, this invalid instance, occurs very outside and, and very uh, far away from my source code location where I um, have um, uh, implemented the error, so to say. Uh, so finding this out while debugging would be really a hassle and in such complex scenarios or real real uh, life complex scenarios about cross trace really helps to check okay what is happening what 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 works uh, in, in which combination and where where should i look at and where what knowledge i can combine in this case we were actually able to solve the issue ourselves but um, as already emphasized by um, dominic if, if we couldn't solve the error now and we wanted some colleague to look at um, this ABAP or at our issue, um, 
or even the SAP support. Also here, the advantage, um, which also was mentioned of the ABAP cross-trace is that we can share it. So um, in, in the debugging scenario and other reproduction scenarios, you then would have to share the business roles. You would have to assign them to your user. Mostly um, you have to do some kind of complex um, scenarios on the UI, create instances and click some buttons to reproduce the error. This could be um, really painful uh, when, when, when doing so. But in that case, we simply go to this small little button in the right upper corner, click share link, ADT link, copy link to clipboard, and just um, send this to your colleagues or to SAP, and then possibly the error hopefully gets resolved somehow. Yeah, that's basically it from our side. Thank you very much. Thank you for your attention um, and for listening. Hopefully I, uh, you all enjoyed the session. <laughs>